When you sit and meditate, make sure that when you get up from the meditation, the concentration isn't in your lap, so that when there's no more lap, it falls on the ground. In other words, try to keep the meditation with you inside all the time, because after all, the breath is always there. Your awareness is always in the present moment. So try to keep the two of them together as much as you can. Make this the place you stand as you go through the day. All too often we regard it simply as one more duty in our many duties we have to, have to observe in our multitasking world. But think of it instead as your foundation. This is where you stand. You stand on the breath. You stand on your awareness of the body in the present moment. And then from there you engage the world. This is your support. And then, of course, as you deal with the world, you realize that not everybody out there is trying to help you maintain your concentration. Even here in the monastery, sometimes you wonder. But you can't let that fact that they're trying to destroy it get you to destroy it. In other words, you stay right here. As for their words, remember the Venerable Sariputta's recommendation. Someone says harsh words, tell yourself an unpleasant contact is made at the air. It's dependent on conditions. An unpleasant sound is made contact at the air, and it's dependent on contact. When the contact is gone, you don't have to continue it. If it continues beyond the contact, that's your doing. You've taken it in. Now you're using the words to stab yourself, even though you may be saying that this person shouldn't say that, and you're focusing on how bad that person is, you're still you're stabbing yourself, because you've dropped your concentration. You have to remember, even though we're working on perfections, we're living in an imperfect world. We ourselves are not quite perfect yet. So whatever perfections you can muster, you want to maintain them. Patience, endurance, those are perfections. Discernment is a perfection, because it requires discernment. Not to feel that you're being put upon. Because if you simply endure, 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 there comes a point where you break. But you remind yourself, I don't have to take this in. I don't have to take on this person's karma. I don't have to continue the contact. In other words, the contact of the ear was the contact of the ear. Now you're making a contact inside the mind. That's where you're continuing it. You don't have to continue that. You find it's a lot lighter. That sound comes and it goes. As for what that person thought in saying those words, you have to ask yourself if that's your business. You may note that, okay, those were harsh words, they were unkind, thoughtless, whatever. I leave it at that. And make sure that you stay with your your object, with your theme. Stay with your foundation. I remember the first year of the monastery, we had a woman here who was, wanted to observe restraint of the senses. That was her. That's a Thai expression for going in retreat. And she came to me and complained one time that people were talking and destroying her restraint of the senses. And I had to remind her, well, she was the one responsible for restraining her senses. If her awareness was going out and focusing on the other people, she'd lost her center. So each of us has to be responsible for our center. Now it's good when we live in such a way, when we observe right speech in such a way that we're helping one another observe our centers. But there will be times when people forget. Or they don't care. You don't have to figure out why their reason is. You just notice, okay, an unpleasant sound has made contact to the ear. I just leave it there, and it's going to disappear. And you're back with your center, which is where you belong. <laughs>